Uh, I've called you this afternoon uh, to address specifically the issues being meted out against one Miguna Miguna. As Kenyans well know, I have got extremely very little that I agree with uh, Miguna Miguna. But uh, you know, truth must be told, and we must look at these things also from a human perspective. And I'll draw your attention to the very famous poem by, by one uh, Martin Nimla, who said during the Nazi days that first they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was, I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Nothing can be more true about this statement than, than what this country, collectively, we are doing to one Miguna Miguna. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you recall that uh, in 2009, and if you go back to your media houses, we have got the records, we have got footage from your TV stations, where I wrote to then Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, and I told him that he was hiring uh, on public uh, 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 payroll in a public office with taxpayers' money, a foreigner uh, by the name of Miguna Miguna. That was in 2009. And I attached his Kenyan passport issued in Kisumu and his Canadian passport. And um, that time it was before the new co the 2020 constitution which allowed for dual citizenship. So by that time it was illegal. In spite of the fact that it was illegal, uh, the then Prime Minister, through uh, Minister for Immigration at that time, the late uh, Otieno Kajuang, refuted and said, and you can go to Citizen and KTN and all those footages in 2009 where he said, Miguna, Miguna is a Kenyan citizen. And they gave reasons. And they said, no, this is just me, Moses Kuria, trying to spell the name of Laila Odinga, the Prime Minister. Now, then we had 2020 constitution, so all the people with dual citizenship were regularized. And so there's nothing criminal, even today, in having dual citizenship. I think we need to bring this chapter to an end. Even as we were opposed to Miguna at that time, and I'm one of them, and I'm asserting that Miguna Miguna is a Kenyan. He has a right to come back to this country. The courts have ruled. We need to facilitate his return. During the burial of uh, uh, the late uh, Charles Rubia, His Excellency the President said that people who even those who are boarding planes like Miguna are free to come back. So how can we say with one hand that Miguna can come back? And then on the other hand, we issue alerts to all the airlines to say that he should not board the, 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 the airplanes. So now Miguna is just a vagabond in, in, in foreign capitals. And there's nothing worse than a Kenyan or a person of any nationality undergoing such humiliation. There's nothing more reassuring than being back home, knowing that no matter what happens, finally you have got a home and a country. Have we, have we uh, uh, removed the citizenship of Miguna Miguna? In any case, the courts are supreme and the courts have ruled. How do you expect other Kenyans now to obey court rulings if the government is the first to, to disobey those rulings? And I want to say this categorically. that I do believe that when the president spoke during Rubia's funeral, he meant every word of it. It has come to my attention that the person who is after Miguna's troubles is none other than Raila Odinga. I have come to learn that Uhuru Kenyatta has no problem with Miguna coming back. But as you saw yesterday uh, on uh, live TV, Citizen TV, by one Gladys Wanga, and it was clear if you look at the tonality of Gladys Wanga on Citizen TV yesterday, that the ODM side of this informal coalition 
is not going to, to let Miguna come back to this country. And I want to say something. You may not agree with me. I don't agree an iota with Miguna Miguna. But surely, the price we have to pay for our democracy is that we have to you know, live in this country with all sorts of people, sane people and lunatics. We have, it is a price we have to pay for our democracy. We, we cannot do anything about it because democracy is a, rule, is a route that we have given to ourselves. Second thing, we are talking about BBI to change constitution. If you cannot respect this one, which is here, which other one do you want us to bring through BBI? If, you cannot, if Miguna is not protected by 2010 constitution, if it cannot be obeyed, even if you change and bring whichever one, who tells you that it shall be obeyed? So let's walk the talk. And if we're talking about bringing changes through the, uh, through the BBI to the Constitution, let us parade our credentials. There is the old dictum in law which says that he who seeks justice must do so with clean hands. I'm asking the government, I'm asking our informal coalition partners to actually walk the talk, lead by example, and show their fidelity to the rule of law by facilitating, as is indeed directed by the courts, for Mr. Miguna Miguna to come back. And you cannot uh, put people into an, uh, a political prison forever. If the Honorable Raila Odinga is worried that the people of where his backyard of Nyanza are going to be to be swayed from from the BBI because by by Miguna, the people of Nyanza are very intelligent people, and I want to ask the people of Nyanza to rise up. This is a region which enjoys some of the most intelligent, the most educated people, and what is happening is nothing but trying to create a monolithic way of thought, a monolithic thought process within the Nyanza region. So that there is no diversity of thought. I come from a region whereby I can say anything, another person says something else, and we end up agreeing and we are not enemies. So this lack of intellectual plurality that Raila Odinga want to bring in Nyanza, I want to say that people of Nyanza deserve to have freedom of choices, as many options as possible, and I want to ask the very wonderful professionals we have from Nyanza, the engineers, the doctors, the lecturers at our universities, the architects, the lawyers, please live true to the education which you pride yourself as being one of the leading regions in this region, rightfully, and say no to this caging of people of that region to one political thought. Miguna Miguna is not my political friend, but it is it behoves upon me as a leader and as a democrat to stand up for the rights of even those people you don't agree with. And there are some things that you can't wish even on your worst enemy. Among them, I understand now, Miguna Miguna did not get a refund for his ticket. He has no money on him. In fact, I, I want to consult the family and we start a pay bill to at least buy food for him. You know, in, in the European capitals. You know it is winter there. The weather is not very good. So I want to tell Mr. President and the Right Honorable Prime Minister, please think about the weather in Europe. This guy has no money. He has no food. He didn't get a refund. There's nobody who's telling him what is going to happen to him. Is this really something you are proud of to see your citizens go through? And I am suspecting that if Miguna, Miguna came here, even those people who would have gone to meet him at... Uh, at uh, JKI, they would not have been even 20. He would have just come, and then life would have gone on. People are busy with their lives. People have lost uh, time for sideshows. Why are you trying to create a mountain out of a molehill? But And uh, by doing so, sacrificing the welfare, and the well-being, and the health, and the psychological uh, affairs about one of our citizens. I will start that for Miguna Miguna. Whoever he is, his shortcomings, we all have our shortcomings, yeah? Miguna may have his shortcomings. I have my shortcomings. Everyone, including the president, including Raila Odinga, all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. 
Mihuna is no exception. And I want to say something, please. Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, this is our citizen. This is our son. It is actually, it should be a mark of shame on our nationhood to have one of our citizens hungry, disturbed, undergoing torturous weather in Europe when we have a country. When we stood with the president and the deputy president during ICC, we were saying that everybody, these are things we can handle in our own country. Have we now gone against that spirit we had during the ICC that we find it's okay for some of one of us to suffer in a foreign land? It's a shame on us as a government, as leaders, and it should be a prick on our conscience as a nation. Thank you.